Oh, hello there. I'm Thomas Guillaume, PhD student in Natalie Cooper's group. I'm interested in the way of combining living and fossil species into phylogeny. See, living biodiversity represents a really small part of total biodiversity. Ignoring that leads to misinterpretation of macroecological or macroevolutionary patterns. For example, if you look at elephants today, there is only three species, this one and two other ones in Africa. But what about the mammoth or the mastodon or all the old 180 others? You get the same problem when studying biogeography. If you look at birds, like tinamous, they are the only members of their family and live in South America. But if you add fossils, poof, you end up with their giant moa's cousins living on the other side of the ocean in New Zealand. Yeah, we all know what crocodiles are and that they spend most of the time bubbling away in rivers. But did we take into account the fossil record? Nope. Look. Here's a fully marine one and a terrestrial one. For my PhD, I decided to study our closest relatives, the primates. They are an awesome group because they are really well studied, both in the jungles and in the fossil record. To combine all this data, I used Ronquist and colleague 2012 recipe. I'll show you. For that, you need a nice group of living primates. Extract their DNA and put it into a matrix. Add their morphological characters and put all that in the same matrix. Take a bunch of extinct primates and get all the information you can from the fossils and put that into another matrix format. We can then grow a phylogenetic tree from the living species in a classical molecular clock way in order to get some primates. And here's one I made earlier. Then mix your living species with the fossil ones. And don't forget to add the primates and launch it. Yes, take some time. Et voilà, here's a tree combining both living and fossil primates. Say you want to study body mass evolution. You can add this information from each taxa present in the tree, living or fossil one. Like here, these are the body mass of lemurs. Compared to other primates, they are rather small, from few grams to few kilos. So, there's no huge variation over here. But if I add the body mass of fossil lemurs, like here, this is a giant lemur, 140 kilos, it changes the models of body mass evolution and show a huge variation. Here yeah, I've only shown one of the many uses for these phylogenetic trees and how they can change our vision of lineage evolution. I'm also really interested in studying the changes of morphology using cool tree discounts or the evolution of diet by looking at the model morphology. I'll show you on the tree. What? What? Uh, where's it going? Jesus.